first memory I have of being depressed was when I was just 14. Growing up as a bigger girl, I was being relentlessly bullied at school because of my weight. I was struggling internally with my sexuality while being tangled up with my first confusing relationship and my home life wasn't ideal. All of these factors combined to give me my first bout of severe depression. While I eventually lost weight, I accepted myself for who I am and found healthy relationships. Depression is still a spectre that haunts me to this day. I have countless regrets and I feel like so many times in my life I've fallen short of my potential because of my mental health. But let's rewind. As a little girl I dreamed of having a platform. Every week I would buy Now magazine and I would obsess over the latest glossy photos of my favourite celebs. To me the sheen on those magazine pages reflected the brightness of their lives and that is what I wanted for myself. Flash forward 10 years and I've got my dream career as an influencer. I should have been the happiest girl in the world but I was still struggling with depression and anxiety. I watched myself in terror throw away all of the dreams that I had as a little girl. I was offered a recording contract with a top record label, TV opportunities, even the chance to collab with and interview Selena Gomez and cover her new song, but I turned it all down due to my mental health. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. I think the time where I feel I let myself and my viewers down the most was when I had my own homeware range in Primark stores around the UK and Europe. I was supposed to do a big meet up at the Tottenham Court Road store and people from all around the world were coming to meet me. It should have been the most exciting time of my life, but at the last minute, I called my manager crying. I was too mentally unwell to go. I remember him picking up the phone and for a few seconds there was just silence until I said, I can't go. I could hear the disappointment in his voice and that instance represented the turning point in my career because I stopped believing in myself so did the people around me. And instead of growing and flourishing into the person that everyone believed I could be, I shrunk. This goes to show that you can have everything you've ever wanted in the world, but if you're not well enough to enjoy it, you may as well not have it at all. Now, don't let me get carried away. It is not all bad. I do have good days and I'm incredibly proud of the career and the life that I've built for myself. But to this day, over a decade later, I still struggle with depression and anxiety. And this month has been particularly bad, but instead of doing what I usually do, which is give up and get back in bed, this week I'm fighting back and I want you all to come along with me. So how do we fight back? We're gonna make some goals. Goal one is to work on my passion, which is singing. My mom has always said that she can tell when I'm happy because I sing, but I've been thinking about that. And the question that I have for myself is, do I sing because I'm happy or am I happy because I'm singing? And I guess we'll have to find that one out together. Goal two, keep my house tidy. You might know the saying that a tidy space is a tidy mind. And that's definitely true for me. When my mind is messy, so is my home. Goal three, isolate myself less. Probably the most important one. Something that I do when I'm struggling is I isolate myself from everyone. I turn my message notifications off so I never know if anyone has reached out to me, which is so bad because when you have mental health problems, one of the things that really helps is having a community and having loved ones to talk to and reach out to and I just completely block everyone off. So I'm gonna turn my WhatsApp notifications back on and I'm gonna aim to reply to my friends and family within the same working day, not three to five days later. <laughs> and the final goal is don't cancel my commitments. When I'm struggling with depression, all I wanna do is lay in bed. I don't wanna see anyone, I don't wanna talk to people, I don't wanna go anywhere, so I end up canceling a lot of things in my life. So my goal for the next couple of weeks is to go to my commitments no matter how I feel and I think this is gonna be very difficult for me but we're gonna smash it. Peeking down there. I can see those. I spent my teenage yeah. years going to singing lessons every week without fail, but I haven't been to one for about four years now. I knew part of working on my passion was gonna be booking a lesson with a vocal coach, which is terrifying to me after so long away, but here we are. I actually have to pick a song to sing at my singing lesson, and I went through my cupboards the other day, I found all of my sheet music, not me cuddling the kettle for emotional support. She said, bring something that I'm quite confident in singing, bring 
something that I know so that she can hear my voice, where it's at right now, where I feel like the most confident, which honestly, I'll probably get there and cry, I'm not gonna lie. Like, let's not kid here, that is probably what's gonna happen. But then I will push through it and sing a song. But yeah, I wanna pick something that I feel comfortable in. I'm thinking probably something from Les Mis. Les Mis is the show that I've always wanted to be in. Lots of things to focus on. They all feel kind of overwhelming. So all I wanna do right now is go to bed and cry. But let's give this a go. Oh, not me moving my most prized possession so I can sit down. God, this is like my depression pit. I'm so lucky that I've got this little boy who looks after me. Whoa, big yawn. Something that I struggle with a lot is knowing that I have so much to be grateful for. From the outside looking in, I've got a dream life. I'm a social media creator. I work from home. I set my own hours. Dream, dream, dream. I've just finished my leg surgeries that I've been dreaming about having since I hit puberty. Another dream right there. I've got a gorgeous girlfriend who I'm completely in love with and fully understands my battle with my mental health and is always there for me, always there to support me and again, dream. I've got a family who love me and a mum who just wants the best for me in whatever situation dream. So why am I so sad? I'm trying not to cry my makeup off. This is something that makes having depression and anxiety so difficult for me to talk about because I know that I have all of these things to be grateful for. I fully know that. But mental illness doesn't choose its victims based on how worthy or not they are to feel sad. You can have everything in the world. You can have the most supportive family, friends, all of these things that are supposed to bring you so much joy yet you can feel lonely you can feel like you're stuck in a constant loop of spiraling downhill i wanted to acknowledge in this video and i think it is important to acknowledge that i am lucky i am blessed i am grateful i just also can't fix my brain but there are small things that help and that's what i need to focus on and i have the best boy Ooh, did I tickle? I'm sorry. So I guess we should choose sheet music, huh? Okay, so we have got this book that says sheet music on it. These are songs that I think I was contemplating putting on an album. So these ones might be good ones to go through, including Let Me Be Your Star from Smash. This show is incredible. And actually that might be one of my comfortable songs, but then we have two. <laughs> Big boxes, oh my God. The sheet music books, Wicked, Anastasia, 24 Italian songs and arias. Oh, I didn't know I had this. I've got The Greatest Showman, Jekyll and Hyde, some of my favorite theater music is from this. Obviously, The Sound of Music. Oh my God, I've just found some old artwork that I did before I actually got good at using my iPad. Oh my God, this is so bad. Did these little house. <laughs> I don't know why I've got these. That's kind of cute. I think I was testing my printer. Aw, that's kind of cute too. In a perfect world, pulling out all of this sheet music would have felt like greeting old friends, but I actually had quite an emotional reaction to it. I was overwhelmed with feelings of anxiety and not being enough. And while embracing my passion for singing can help me feel better, the confidence it takes to succeed at that sometimes feels out of reach when my mental health is bad. But I'm really proud of myself for soldiering on through this and doing some warm ups anyway. One step at a time, I'm gonna meet my goal this week. Now, mum. Cause at its time so cold. When I need the wizard, once I proved my worth, what I've waited for since. Since birth, and all the boys has to love you. <laughs> Baby, can't you see? There's nothing else for me to do. For the world that I long to see, does he feel what I feel? I don't know a thing before that. Let's have a celebration that glinda away. Understanding that this kind of thing can happen Shall we dance? 
Then came the time to have my singing lesson. I'll talk about that in a second. But afterwards, my mum decided to take us to a place called Homebush. There's a few shops there and it was really nice to be out and about. She also bought me an Easter egg that's shaped like a cat because I'm not actually in England for Easter this year. And how can you be sad when you've got a cat Easter egg? I know you're all absolutely dying to know how my singing lesson went. So let's talk about it. So first of all, I took In My Dreams from Anastasia. This song is gorgeous. It's one of the songs that I was singing before my lesson and it just kind of felt right. I was really confident going into my lesson. I thought I've done my warm up at home, basically. I'm gonna go in there, probably be a bit nervous, but I'll smash it. Did Gabby smash it? No. <laughs> My teacher, as soon as I got in, she basically asked, do you want to do some warm ups first? Or do you want to just run through your song once to like loosen up a little bit? Let me hear your voice. And I was thinking, well, I've just warmed up at home, so I may as well straight away sing my song, which I think was a big mistake because I was so nervous that I absolutely butchered it. I literally stood there physically shaking and I just couldn't ground myself enough like when you sing you have to have a good bass if you're all wobbly on your legs you're not going to be able to produce like a strong sound it's going to be wobbly and it's harder to engage your diaphragm and i sung it so badly and i was thinking oh my god this poor woman has had to say positive things to me after that monstrosity <laughs> but anyways we spent a good portion of the rest of the lesson working on grounding myself so i felt like i had a good place to like sing from i felt strong and confident and we worked a little bit on how I can improve my belt because something that I'm good at is head voice and I'm okay at like mixing my voice but I've never had a strong belt. Sung through my song a couple times with the new techniques and like me feeling a little bit confident and by the end of the lesson I sung so much better. Still wasn't my best work. <laughs> believe me, but I felt a lot better about it. And I've actually booked another lesson for in a week's time. So why not get the ball rolling, have a weekly lesson and just get to a place where I am not so damn anxious about singing in front of people. Kind of like exposure therapy, do the things that you're scared of. So I feel really proud of myself for going because honestly, every part of me wanted to cancel, but I did it and I'm proud for that. So yay me. <laughs> and even though it didn't go right, like my lesson didn't go perfectly, I'm still so proud for doing it. And that in turn has made me feel like a bit more positive about things. So if you guys are putting something off, if you can, throw yourself in the deep end and see where it gets you. I've got my emotional support cat and my emotional support knickknacks. I'm just really sad now. I don't know why I'm just sat here watching TikTok. <laughs> I think it's time to book an appointment with the doctor. I'm gonna see if I can do that now or if I'll have to get up in the morning and do it. But I don't think my medication is helping me anymore. See if there's anything else I can try. In organising the mess of my kitchen, I felt like I was organising parts of my brain. Every task I completed made me feel more and more accomplished, and that helped me fight back the dark thoughts. So if you're struggling with your mental health right now, and you've let your house get a little bit messy, consider tidying one of your rooms, because it helped me more than I could have imagined. The relief I felt when I walked into my kitchen the next morning was palpable. Starting off every day with something positive is super helpful, and I think that helped sustain my mood for the rest of the day. So in the first fight of the week, Gabby won, depression zero. I just had a dentist appointment that I almost canceled because I've been anxious about it all day, about having to like leave my flat, see people, talk to people, put a smile on, but it actually went okay other than needing two fillings and the whole thing costing 560 pounds, which I'm not thrilled about. But yeah, I'm proud of myself for going so I really didn't want to. So I feel good about that, well done me. <laughs>
here every time I have a little positive. So another positive of today, I just got on and managed to record a Patreon podcast episode with Cam. We have decided to just go like the chatty route. So we just sat and had a chat about some pop culture, things that are happening in our personal lives right now. We answered a couple of advice questions, but it was a really fun and funny episode. And I think I've realized that with the podcast, what I am comfortable with and what I like to consume from other people is just people sitting down and chatting, just having a laugh and it being really lighthearted. So we just recorded our first episode like that and I loved it I had a really good time we were already in love I would have fallen in love with you even if you didn't have a scent you know what I mean yeah uh, same feeling positive tonight and we will link the patreon below if you guys want to listen but the next thing I'm gonna do is finish tidying this kitchen I started earlier today but I went out to the dentist and made some food and I've got it messy again I cleaned the entire fridge out which had been needing to be done here is the finished fridge I'm so happy that I did this this felt like one of those huge tasks that was gonna take ages but no it's all done now okay this is the finished kitchen for now this is what I've managed to get done i am so much happier with this than what it looked like before let me tell you that everything is super nice and clean i've cleaned down all the sides all the appliances that little shelf up there and this section here which is still kind of cluttered but hey ho it's so much better the hob as well that is the kitchen for right now feeling quite overwhelmed today i've got a lot to do and it just feels like there's a lot on my plate and I know I just need to take every task one by one, but yeah, finding it quite hard. My brain's not being very nice to me today, but I actually have 10 minutes to get to my leg massage that I have to have once a week after my recent surgery. So I'm gonna go and have that and then we will see how I feel afterwards, hopefully a lot more relaxed. You know, sometimes it doesn't help. It's like an hour of me just overthinking So I'm not on my phone or any distractions. I really didn't want to go to this appointment. And let me tell you, the rain didn't make it any easier. As a winter person, I'm shocked to say this, but I can't wait to see a little bit of sunshine. I feel like that's really going to help my mood. Uh, I feel kind of annoyed tonight because for the last few days, I've been feeling a little bit better. But today I woke up and I didn't feel positive and I told you that a little bit earlier but it's just lasted the whole day i think i'm starting to feel really lonely cam went back to america a few weeks ago now and we didn't have anything booked in of when we were going to see each other again and that is always really hard as a long distance couple because i want to spend every day with her and she feels the same way about me so being apart for weeks on end can be really hard and lonely i've actually finally booked in my flight to go back to america in a couple of weeks time so that's good but yeah i think the loneliness is starting to creep in, but not lonely as in like, <laughs> I actively want to go out and see people. I just want to see my girlfriend. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed and maybe sleep this off. Sometimes sleep really helps. So sleep did in fact not help. My brain was going wild, full of thoughts of not being good enough, being paranoid that I sound uneducated when I speak. But I'm so lucky that I've got Cam, who is always there to help me. You have such knowledge artistically. You have an eye that I could never have, you know, in design. And, and that's an intelligence as well. We're all smart in different ways. I know that I have talents and stuff, but then this is what upsets me because I know that like one of my talents is singing but why is it so hard for me to do that? I'm so excited for his breakfast. Hey. Oh, come on then. Come on, you can eat it. Good boy. I'll forever be grateful for Nelly. He is more like a therapy animal for me. Anytime I'm sad, he is by my side and he will not leave. When you're going through depression and you feel so alone, that's what you need. You need to know that people are there for you. And although Nelly isn't a person and he can't speak back to me, it still feels like he understands. 
I'm on mission sort the flat out today. So I've been hoovering, I've brushed Nelly. I've cleaned all the surfaces like the tables. I think I was spending so much time in bed, not only because of my depression, but because I didn't know where to start with tidying my living room. But I committed to the cause and I tidied each area one by one, which gave me the little dopamine hit of ticking off tasks, kind of like a to-do list. So let's move on to the most stressful room of all, the guest bedroom. Because I don't spend a lot of time in this room, it's the one that gets messy the easiest because I will just walk in, drop things and leave them there. What are you doing in there? Good boy. We don't get clothes fluffy, okay? Okay, thank you. <laughs> now you're gonna get these clothes fluffy. <laughs> This is the best that I can get my room right now. All of this stuff has been consolidated a lot, but this right here is all stuff that I can't move until my dining room cupboards are empty. I've changed the bedding round, so I've put this gorgeous linen beige bedding in here. I feel like it fits the vibe a lot more. I've again woken up in quite a positive mood and I've decided that I'm actually gonna go and take a shower, wash my hair. I'm gonna put fresh fake tan on tonight. I'm gonna make myself feel the best that I can feel, do all the things that make me feel really good. Gonna have a little follower in a second. There he is. Come on, shower time. He's such a creep. He sits on the edge of the bath and watches me when I have a shower. There we go. You've got your spot. I like to think he's protecting me while I'm in the shower, while I'm vulnerable. But let's sort this appearance out. My my hair is so greasy. I've got old fake tan on that I need to scrub off while I'm in the shower and I just know I'm gonna feel so much better after this. There are some days where having a shower feels like I'm genuinely washing all of my negative thoughts down the drain. And today was one of those days. I felt so refreshed. This is your sign to get out of bed and go and take a nice, warm, long shower. I guarantee it will make you feel a bit better. I thought I would show you what I use to fake tan. It's a Bondi Sands self-tanning foam in the shade dark. And before I tan, I use this moisturizer. It's the Aveeno Daily Moisturizing After Shower Mist. This one sits really well underneath fake tan. It doesn't make it go patchy. So there we go. I'm going to be nice and tan in the morning. Let's cut to that. <laughs> Here we go, guys. I'm like a new woman today. Got my fake tan on, got my makeup on, got my hair kind of done. While your appearance definitely isn't the most important part of who you are, I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel better after putting a little effort in. After a two week YouTube hiatus, I was able to film a video and complete so many tasks on my to-do list. Depression zero, Gabby two. Let's continue the self-care. I guess we're carrying on the self-care thing today because I've just booked very last minute a brow and a nail appointment while i've been going through a tough time i thought why not do the things that i know are gonna help me and one of those things is getting my brows done so let's have a final little look at my brows and then i also want to get my gel nail polish taken off because my nails have got to the point where they're so long that i'm struggling to take my contact lenses out and that is the point where i know i need to get them redone however i'm just gonna get it taken off because one thing that i've realized while having a think this week is that something that i used to love doing that that really calmed me down. It meant that I was off my phone, off of social media. I used to love painting my nails at home. I'm gonna have it taken off today. And then I'm gonna go to Boots and I think I've got some Boots points. So I'm gonna pick a new nail polish color. Then we'll come home and paint them. <laughs> Here we go, final outfit of the day. I've got this coat on from Marks and Spencers. I'm actually obsessed with it. I think it's gorgeous. This is today's outfit. Let's go get hair and nails done. The girl who does my eyebrows is a breath of fresh air. She's always so positive and funny. And I'm so glad I booked these appointments last minute. It was really nice to get out of the house, even if it was raining again. A win is a win and I'll take it. I am back and I had quite a lot of boots points. So I actually treated myself to three new colors. This is the first one. It's the Essie Gel Couture in the shade Invest in Style. This is another, it's called Island Hopping. It's like a muted plum shade, really pretty. And then my eyebrows girl actually told me that she likes these nail polish so i decided to pick up this like her lessened blue shade for the spring and summer nice little fresh set of nails fast forward to the end of the night but look at these brows she slayed them i have two very different shaped brows in general but she gets them the closest that they've ever looked love them
It's been about two weeks since I started this video, so how am I feeling now? While not every moment in the past couple of weeks was perfect, it didn't have to be to make a positive change overall. I managed to keep my goal of replying to friends and family on time and stay consistent in speaking to them, which obviously had a positive effect on my mood overall. Isolating yourself from the world, while it can feel like the only option at the time, really doesn't help your mental health. I stuck to every single commitment an appointment that I made throughout this video, which was actually one of my biggest takeaways. It just shows that if I can manage to take the hardest step, which is getting out of bed, no matter how the rest of the day goes, I can make it to my commitments. Keeping my home tidy has been a lot easier now that I've got the big clean out of the way, and my mind is so much less messy because of it. I can't tell you how nice it is to wake up in a morning and know that every room that you walk into is clean and fresh. The final goal I had was to focus on my passion. And that I did. The question I had at the beginning of this video was, do I sing because I'm happy or am I happy because I'm singing? And I think the overall consensus is that it's a little bit of both. While singing does give me the endorphins I need to brighten my mood, I am more inclined to sing in general if I'm in a positive mood to begin with. Either way, I'm so proud of myself for putting time and effort into something that means so much to me. I fully stepped outside of my comfort zone and that's the way that you grow as a person. I know it'll pay off in the end. Obviously my goals were quite small and there are so many other things in life that I struggle to do. So I'm wondering if this needs to be a series. Maybe in the next episode I could set some larger goals. I think it's important to let you know that I do have a therapist and if you're struggling with your mental health right now, while setting yourself some small attainable goals can really help, seeking professional help is the way to go. So I'm going to leave some resources in the down bar of mental health facilities who are there to help you. And with that I'm going to go ahead and go. Thank you so much for watching this video and caring about something that affects my life so deeply. It really does mean the world to me and if you'd like to catch more uploads from me be sure to hit the subscribe button. But I guess I'll see you guys in my next upload. Bye!